using our 19 millimeter socket, let's go ahead and remove our lug nuts. Let's grab our wheel, remove it, and set it aside. I'm gonna go ahead and remove our brake caliper. By doing this here, we're gonna remove this 13 millimeter stud right here, or bolt, and then there's one up top, we're gonna go ahead and remove that one as well. Now what we're going to do is use our pry bar and we're going to go ahead and work our brake caliper off here. Now you want to have some sort of strap or a caliper hook to hang this once we remove it. Hanger here, we're going to hook it and we're just going to support that up on our coil spring. Just hang that up and out of the way. Let's go ahead and use a small pry bar and go ahead Move your brake pads. We're going to, get to remove our two 14 millimeter bolts holding our caliper bracket to the knuckle. Once we get this bolt out, I'm going to go ahead and repeat for the top. And once you have that bolt loose, you want to go ahead and support that caliper bracket. You don't want to have that drop and hit you in the foot. Go ahead and pull out the bolt and go ahead and remove your caliper bracket. Now at this point here, we can go ahead and Straighten out our wheel. We want to go ahead and remove the center cap here. I'm going to use a pry bar with a little bit of an edge on there. We're just going to gently tap. I'm going to continue to do this around here. We want to slowly work this off. And as I'm tapping this, I'm slowly prying it out. Here we go. And pop that cover off, set that aside. Remove your cotter pin. Castle nut. I'm going to go ahead and remove our spindle nut here. I'm just using a pair of adjustable pliers here to go ahead and spin this off. Set that aside. If you wobble like that, I'm going to go ahead and pop a washer off. Your outer bearing will pop out. Then you can go ahead and grab that brake rotor, slip it right off of the spindle. We want to go ahead and remove our outer tie rod end here. Now normally there would be a, a metal brake dust shield here. Ours is completely rotted off. There's a bolt here and there's a bolt here and there's one underneath that would have that. If your vehicle still has it, you're just going to look behind the dust shield. And you're going to notice this nut right here, the castle nut. You also want to look for your cotter pin that should be coming through one of these notches in the castle nut. This is rusted. The cotter pin is no longer there. And well, we don't have anything to remove. But if you do have a cotter pin, go ahead and use your pliers. You want to go ahead and work that out and get that out. Using a 21 millimeter socket, 
I'm going to go ahead and loosen and remove this nut here. Now there's remnants of the cotter pin in the thread here, so we're going to go ahead and use a punch. And just try and work out the remainder pieces of that. going to keep working this until we can get that cotter pin out. So by working the cotter pin through on this side here, we came, we got it to come out the other side. I'm just going to grab a pair of our cutters here and just work that out. We got our remaining pieces of cotter pin. Now we're going to go ahead and use our hammer. We're going to strike the knuckle right here and this should release our outer tie rod end. Now what we want to do is take the spindle or knuckle unit, spin that out. We want to go ahead and remove this lower ball joint nut. We spray this down with some rust penetrant. We're going to use our 15 16 wrench to go ahead and loosen this. Now I'm not going to remove this all the way. I'm going to thread it up to the point where about half of the threads are inside the castle nut. And we're going to leave it for now. At this point here, grab your spindle, spin that out, and let's go the other way with it. Using our 15 millimeter socket, we'll go ahead and remove this bolt for our upper ball joint. I'm going to use a breaker bar to go ahead and loosen this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and tap the top. And what we're trying to do is work our upper ball joint out of the axle unit here. Try and loosen that up. Now you would normally have a backing plate here so you'd be able to rotate this back and forth. that doesn't want to move, we're going to go ahead and put a pry bar right inside. See if we can open this up a little bit. We now have that pop free. Move this here. Now at this point here, we have the upper ball joint loose. Go ahead and spin off that nut. And it was nice to have that nut there. It's use it as a capture nut so that the spindle didn't drop out. Spin that nut off, set it aside, and then we can go ahead and drop that out like so. Now, in performing ball joint replacements, it's always best to do them both at the same time. In order to do this job here, we have to press out the lower first and then press out the upper. Reinstallation, the upper goes first and then the lower. Very important to know this. At this point here, we're going to flip this over. We're going to go ahead and remove both of our grease fittings. Just going to use a pair of pliers. I'm going to spin these out. Now on our lower unit here, there should be a C-clip or retaining ring around here. We only have a piece of ours in here. So what we're going to do is wearing safety glasses, we're going to go ahead and use a punch and let's work out the remainder piece. 
Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop off our lower dust boot. You may or may not be able to do that with what you have on the vehicle. I'm gonna set up our ball joint tool here. I'm gonna make sure that you have a cup large enough to fit around this here for the ball joint to come out. This cup is a little too small, so we're going to go to the larger cup. Now with our ball joint press set up so that the rod goes through where the lower ball joint was positioned. Let's go ahead and press out the upper ball joint. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pop off our grease boot, set that aside, and that's going to allow us to identify what size ring we need to press this into place. Let's go ahead and press our upper ball joint into place. We want to make sure that we have enough room for our lock ring to go in and our ball joint is definitely seated in there nice and flush. Now if you want, now's the time to go ahead and you can add some grease around this ball joint area and pack some in there. Take our boot, go ahead and slide that down and over. Now what we want to do is take our new lock ring here. Go ahead and spin this over. I'm going to go ahead and line up this snap ring. Let's go ahead and get this installed. Once we have that in place there, I'm going to go ahead and just push that down. We'll snap into place like so. And go ahead and remove our rubber boot. Set that aside. I want to make sure that everything's lined up there nice. Let's go ahead and press our lower ball joint into place. You can see that our Ball joint has not come through fully, so we need to continue to press this through. Now by looking down inside around the perimeter here, you can tell that our ball joint has been seated. We're all set to go there. 
what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of grease around the base of our ball joint here. It's not necessary, but it's just a precaution I like to do. Good habit to have. Go ahead and install your dust boot. And give this a wipe down. Let's go ahead and install our spindle here. Go ahead and get our castle nut on the lower ball joint. This is going to hold this. And top here, we just have our sleeve. I'm just going to go ahead and tap that back down. Let's go ahead and get our upper bolt installed here. We're just going to go ahead and thread that in as far as we can by hand. We're not going to tighten this at this point. Let's go ahead and pivot this back over. I want to go ahead and tighten our lower ball joint nut to 89 foot pounds. I want to watch here our ball joint stud has a hole in it and we need to line up that hole with our castle nut notch and it's right behind the post. So we need to tighten this up a little bit more. And we'll keep on doing this until we can get that to line up. Now we got a clear shot here. Let's go ahead and install our cotter pin. Let's go ahead and install our cotter pin here. Go ahead and feed that through. I'm going to bend over our tab on the top, and then we're just going to cut off our excess. Now, before we tighten down our upper bolt, we want to go ahead and make sure that our sleeve up top is bottomed out. Tap that down into place. Then we can go ahead and snug our bolt down, and then we'll go ahead and torque that into place. and torque this down. I'm going to take this to 85 foot-pounds. Let's go ahead and install our outer tie rod end here. Let's go ahead and torque down this nut to 55 foot-pounds. You also want to pay attention to where the hole is in the stud to where the notch is in the castle nut. Let's go ahead and install our cotter pin. Feed our cotter pin through. I'm going to fold up the top half and snip off our excess. Now you're going to take a look at our spindle. We're going to go ahead and clean this up. Now when you're cleaning this, you want to inspect for any scores, any marring, any deformation in this here. Check the threads also on this. Clean it up the best you can. Now our spindle looks really good, so let's go ahead and get our brake rotor installed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put some grease inside of the brake rotor here. What we want to do is try and pack the inside of the rotor hub with enough grease so that it's, it's level with our bearing race all the way through. Now 
Ours looks pretty good in here. What we're going to do is install our rotor. I'm going to line this up, feed the spindle through the bearing in the back, and push it through like so. Take your other bearing, slide that in. If you want, you can put some extra grease inside now. Kind of pack that in there. Next, you're going to take your washer, line that up, push that on. Take that spindle nut, and we're going to spin that in. We're going to thread this on as far as we can. We're going to go ahead and use a 27 millimeter socket on this, and we're going to tighten this down as we rotate the brake rotor here. What we're doing is we're going to seat the bearings. Keep on rotating this here. Gonna loosen it. I'm going to tighten it a little again. And you just basically, what you're looking to feel for is a little pop where this all snaps into place. At this point here, just going to loosen that just a tiny bit. With that seated, let's go ahead and wipe the face of this here. I'm going to install our castle nut. I want to make sure that the hole on the spindle here lines up with one of the notches on the castle. Go ahead and feed a cotter pin through. I'm going to go ahead and tap this over. I'm going to cut off the excess. We're going to take our dust cap, get that on there. I'm going to go ahead and tap that into place. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my brass punch and go on the perimeter. You don't really want to smash the end of this here with the hammer or mallet because you can flatten it out. Then that's going to come in contact with the, with the cotter pin on the inside and possibly make noises. Work your way around, seat the cap. There you go. Let's go ahead and install our caliper bracket. Line that up and get our bolt started. Once we get started a few threads, go ahead and get the bottom one in. I'm gonna go ahead and snug down our bolts here. Go ahead and torque down our caliper bracket bolts here to 85 foot pounds. Install your brake pads.
go ahead and grab our brake caliper here. Now what you want to do is have a catch can or some towels underneath. What we're going to do is we're going to open up this bleeder screw. So that we can release the pressure from the brake system. We have a little bit of brake fluid coming out. Now what we're going to do is use our compressor tool here. We want to go ahead and work these two pistons back into the caliper. As we're doing this here, it's actually working brake fluid out of the bleeder screw. We went ahead and put our hook back on here just to kind of support the caliper itself. Now we have both of our pistons completely retracted inside of the unit here. I'm going to go ahead and release that. Now we can go ahead and tighten up our bleeder screw and snug that down. Give us a good wipe down. And if you have some solvent here, go ahead and give that a good spray just to kind of clean that up. We don't want to have any residual brake fluid on here to contaminate our brake pads. Go ahead and remove our support hook here. And I'll line this up. And we're going to install our upper bolt first. I'll work our caliper over our brake pads. Get our upper bolt started here. Once that's caught, we'll go ahead and get our lower bolt started. Now we have the two bolts started. I'm going to go ahead and snug these down. Let's go ahead and torque down our caliper bolts here. I'm going to take these to 35 foot pounds. Repeat for the upper. And at this point here, once you have your brakes on, you want to go ahead and hop into the vehicle. Pump up the brake, make sure you get a solid pedal. If you don't have a solid pedal, you want to come back and you want to go ahead and start your bleeding process. Once you're done with your bleeding process of your brake system here, you can go ahead and install your wheel. Let's go ahead and install our wheel. Once we get that on, I'm going to go ahead and install our lug nuts. Gonna get all these started by hand, and then we're gonna go ahead and snug them down. Let's go ahead and torque our lug nuts down to 100 foot-pounds. 